The higher body count you have, the stronger you will be. Our protagonist has minus 1000 body count. He is literally beyond virgin. Let's check together what happens to him. The story starts with Hina. A young girl lives with her mother. However, one day she witnessed her mom being dragged underground by a dark mysterious power. During that terrifying moment, her mom gave her a glass ball with the number 10,000 in it and told her to look for the legendary ace. The last she saw of her was her right hand with the number zero on it. Ever since then, Hina has been traveling the world for five years on foot in search of one of the aces, a group of superhuman soldiers that emerged during the Waste Wars and disappeared once peace was restored. She finally reaches a town where it's rumored one of the aces lies and gives her feet a well-deserved break. While washing her feet, she's approached by a creepy-looking man named Licht, who begs her for money because he hasn't had a meal in days. His face is so off-putting that she tries to run away, but he chases her across the town until someone finally kicks him into a tree. Ina's savior is a lady named Nana, who owns the mobile tavern that Licht works for. She apologizes for his harassment and feeds her a meal in the house, during which she tries to get to know Hina. Realizing she doesn't know the ways of this world, she explains the count system that runs this society. Every person's worth is determined by a number printed on their body, which can increase or decrease throughout one's life depending on specific conditions for each person. For example, Nana's number increases every time someone tells her that her food is delicious and decreases when they say it's disgusting. A person with a lower number is bound to obey the orders of someone possessing a higher number. Moreover, if a person's number reaches zero, they are taken into the abyss, an unknown place from which no one has returned to tell the tale. Hina finally understands the fate that befell her mother and the number 441 on her thigh. She guesses that her number must correspond to the distance she has walked, with every 100 kilometers walked resulting in raising her number by one. She shares her goal of finding the legendary ace hero who bears a shining white star, saying that she's come all the way to this town because she heard that he lives here. However, Nana is confident that no ace lies here, causing Hina to get upset and leave. While walking away, one of the military surgeon majors comes and claims he's the ace she's been looking for. Sure enough, he has a shining white star on his cheek. Hina instantly believes him and is overridden with emotions after finally completing her mission. He starts leading her to the guardhouse when Nana tries to subtly discourage her from going, but can't outright tell her because of his higher number. When they reach the guardhouse, Hina feels uneasy by his advances and how he dodges all questions related to being the ace. She pulls out the glass ball that her mother gave, causing him and all the other guards to suddenly get on guard. The so-called ace asks her if she's a ballot holder but she has no idea what he's talking about. He draws his sword on her and orders him to hand the ball over to him. She refuses to because it's her mother's memento, leading him to break the sofa she was sitting on. She gathers her wits and tells him to stop because she has a higher number than him. In response, he challenges her to a star stake, which is a duel that wagers their numbers. He attacks her non-stop until she begs him to stop, which is a sign of defeat. Having lost the star stake, her number gets transferred to the surgeon, boosting his number up to 760 and leaving her only with one. He then starts laughing at his naivety as he removes the star sticker on his face, revealing he was faking his identity as the ace. After all, the ace existed 300 years ago, meaning he'd be long dead even if his legend is true. He forces her to choose between giving him the ballot or wagering again, and the pressure causes her to have a breakdown. Suddenly, someone else answers for her and steps in between them. It's Licht, who offers to bet his numbers, which he shows to be minus 999. It signifies the number of women that rejected him. The sergeant relishes the idea of sending him to the abyss while Hina begs him to back away. Licht, whose face mask starts breaking apart, tells Hina she is worth saving because of her noble journey to fulfill her mother's last wish, but she should stop hunting for the ace because he is nothing but a glorified murderer. He unleashes his sword which has the number 5700 and a bright white star, revealing himself to be the legendary superhuman ace whose count marks the amount of foes he has defeated. The soldiers start pooping their pants, but the sergeant major says he must be a fake because aces existed over 300 years ago. Licht asks Hina to close her eyes as the soldiers charge at him, and they disappear before the soldiers close in on them. He whizzes past the sergeant rapidly leaving only cracks on the ground where he places his foot as a trace. He finally shows himself behind the surgeon and walks toward him, each footstep causing strong winds that push the surgeon back up against a wall. He roughs the surgeon up a bit before flying up into the sky with Hina in his arms. She finally opens her eyes and promises to treat him to a meal if he doesn't hurt himself. 
With that deal in place, he takes them back to the ground to deal a finishing blow and transfers the beaten up surgeon's number of 760 to Hina, leaving him with a measly one. After Licht assures her that he's completely fine, she starts crying out of joy because she's finally completed her five-year-long mission. He sees a frightened soldier in the corner of his eye and suddenly snatches the ballot out of Hina's hands. He makes a show of taking her mother's memento away from her for his personal gain and threatens to do a star stake with her if she doesn't back off. He throws a doll at her and tells her to be happy with just that. Then he disappears again, leaving her teary-eyed on the ground. At dusk, a depressed Hina walks back to Nana's shop who is glad to see her alive and well. After hearing everything that happened, Nana hands her the doll out of which her dear ballot pops out. She explains that owning a ballot is one of the worst criminal offenses under the law and is also one of the most sought out artifacts in the black market. Since tons of solitors witnessed her with a ballot, Licht pretended to steal the ballot from her to prevent her from getting arrested by the military or chased by thugs. After realizing his good intentions, Nina runs after Licht, who is leaving the town, and begs him to stop. She says she's been lonely all those years that she traveled the world without her mother, and she doesn't want to let go of the happiness that she felt when she met him and Nana after coming to this town. Despite all her attempts to stop him, he doesn't stop the carriage and wears his signature mask. The number on his hand goes from minus 999 to minus 1000. After he's gone, one of the soldiers that was present in the guardhouse approaches her and reveals himself to be an undercover spy who has been tasked with looking for the ace. As a token of thanks for helping him find Licht, he keeps her possession of the ballot a secret. He brings out an earpiece and reports having found the ace of flashing strikes alive to his real commanding officer. By the next day, the military dispatches soldiers to ask around about Licht's whereabouts. Surprisingly, nobody is looking for Hina even though she's a ballot holder. Over in a peaceful village, the young master sergeant Lin May distributes flyers to help build a children's park. Ever since she's been stationed here, there's been no criminals to arrest and she devotes her time to helping out the locals. Even though her count increases by helping people, she's been stuck at the same number in this village because it's necessary for her to help someone in serious trouble. Something that just doesn't occur in this place, her subordinate, Sergeant Pelopoporo warns her about hitting a dead end in promotions if she lingers in this village for too long. He shows her the wanted poster distributed by the military about Licht, the ace of flashing strikes. Right then, she spots a masked man and demands to see his face. He refuses to unmask himself, first explaining that his mask is completely different from the one on the poster. She backs off at first, but then decides to force the mask off anyway. Afraid to blow his cover, he begs her to let him keep his mask on because he is at minus 1000 because of all the girls that have rejected him. He can't risk going even further down by being rejected once more after she sees his face. After seeing him cry a whole puddle, Pella recommends Lin go on a date with him because it could increase her count. Sure enough, after offering her hand to hold, her number goes from 410 to 411. They go on many pity mini dates, with Pell guiding Lin through a tabloid magazine. On one of their dates, they have to cross an old wooden bridge, but one of the planks breaks, causing Lin to lose her footing. The masked man uses his quick reflexes and strength to grab her arm and pull her up. After that, Pelly continues to mess with Lin by making her go on more dates, but once he gets tired of it, he throws the magazine away and reveals that he knew from the beginning that the masked man is the one on the wanted poster. You see, he hasn't been sent to the abyss, even though he has a negative count, meaning he must have a second count to compensate for it. Realizing his cover is blown, Lick takes Lin's sword to avoid a fight, but she demonstrates her speciality in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Despite her skillful kicks and blows, Lick is completely unaffected and relentlessly flirts with her. Eventually, she accepts the appeal of a military soldier in criminal romance and asks him to marry her. However, during the time she has her eyes closed while proposing, Lick slips away. Meanwhile, back in town, Hina enjoys working as a waitress at Nana's shop. They are saving up money to go on a trip and look for Licht. However, a lieutenant named Jail Murdoch suddenly shows up at the shop and interrogates Nana about Licht's location. She feigns ignorance at first, but he traps her in place. She says that all she knows is that he was headed east, but Jail senses her lying and takes his men to the west for their manhunt. Once Lieutenant Murdoch leaves, dozens of giant iron spears erupt from the ground and destroy Nana's wagon. Nana explains that even Murdoch is a ballot holder and he used its power to destroy her shop. Hina's first reaction is to rush to the west as well to find Licht before the lieutenant, but Nana points out how they're in no position to travel with the broken wagon. She officially hires Hina full-time so that they can fix up her mobile shop and collect enough money to make the trip west. 
Over at the village, Lin mourns over the loss of a potential promotion to second lieutenant officer by letting Lick get away. She most looks forward to the status of officer that comes with the privilege of having her own choice of uniform. While distributing flyers for the kids' park, she runs into Licht again, which results in a long chase that the whole village misunderstands as a lover's quarrel. Eventually, the locals get involved and Licht escapes again. He watches from atop a cliff as the villagers come to her for all their issues. A couple asks her to name their baby, and a baker brings a young boy who keeps stealing from his shop. She tells the boy to come to the guardhouse if he's ever hungry. Flooded by their problems, Lin backs up and steps on a girl's doll, causing it to snap at the neck. She tries to fix the doll to make the kid stop crying, but is unable to put it back together. Pell urges her to go look for the loose criminal licked, but she is adamant about fixing the doll first because it's an important gift given to her by her mother. Touched by her dedication, Lick jumps down from the cliff, fixes the girl's doll, and lets himself get chased by Lin again. He runs and runs until he suddenly notices something that brings him to a halt. He frantically warns Lin to stop chasing him and gets attacked by a bunch of iron spears. He looks to be injured and unresponsive, causing Lin to rush to his aid. The lieutenant surrounds them and orders her to move away if she doesn't want to get hurt. Lake lets out a sigh and takes off his disguise to show his true face. Jail Murdoch commands his soldiers to attack but Lick protects Lin from the line of fire and holds them back with slashes of his sword that cause winds strong enough to push the men away. His powers confirm that he is a ballot holder, so Lieutenant Jail Murdoch decides to face him. He makes Lin recite the mission of their forces. While saluting, she recites the mission by heart. Their duty is to arrest ballot holders because ballots are an illegal form of counts, mere possession of which is cause for arrest. The only exception are military officers who are allowed to own ballots in order to fight criminal ballot holders. Ballots have the ability to give its owner special abilities, the strength of which depends on the ballot's number. Licht smirks and points out how his 5700 count far exceeds Jail's 900 ballot, which forms iron objects. Jail attacks with hundreds of iron spears but Licht unleashes his flash level speed to become invisible and escape. However, the lieutenant surprisingly has the ability to catch up to him and knock him down with a mammoth iron pillar. He raises iron's bars around them, making Licht wonder his true count. Jail explains that he wishes to fight evil with his own hands, but if his count is raised too high, he will be forced into promotions that shove him behind in his desk. To avoid this, he's been hiding his actual count which is a whopping 12,500. It's at this point that Licht realizes he's in trouble. Jail creates another iron pillar to hit Licht, but he barely blocks it with his sword. While he's preoccupied with blocking the first pillar, Jail creates another pillar to his side, but he jumps away in time. Licht uses his signature whizzing speed to stealth attack Jail, but he's too slow for Jail, who pinpoints Licht's position and disarms him with another iron pillar. As the sword flies in the air, they engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat until Jail bests Licht again. He catches the sword on its way down and throws it to Licht, because his flashing strikes are too slow for him anyway. Licht decides to use his ultimate high-altitude strike move, catapulting himself in the air and using the force of gravity to strike down his enemy. However, Jail takes advantage of the fact that he can't dodge anything while landing from a jump and launches a bunch of iron pillars that weaken Licht's momentum until finally he traps Licht in iron constraints. Once trapped, Jail interrogates Licht of his true identity, believing that he must have been a part of the military because of the fighting style he used. Moreover, he wants to know what's so special about Licht that the entire army is devoting its attention to catching him even though he's just a 5700 count ballot user. When he refuses to answer, he decides to torture him, but Lin protects him by getting in the way. She tries to convince Jail not to use torture because Lick doesn't seem to be a bad person. Instead, Jail tears her park flyer and calls her worthless because she spends her time helping the locals in this peaceful village instead of carrying out her official military duty of catching criminals. The least she can do is allow justice to be delivered to Lick. The infuriated villagers stand up for her, but she tells them to stand back because the lieutenant is right. Just as she is about to apologize, Lick stops her and breaks out of the iron chains which he should only be capable of if his count is higher than 5700. They finally start fighting for real, and Jail starts sweating over losing the advantage. Licht fights with renewed fury, ordering Jail to apologize to Lin for insulting her because it's not that she's not doing worthy work by being in a peaceful town, but that the village is peaceful because of all the work she does. The force of their clashing weapons causes the ground around them to crack, 
leading to the cliff edge that Lin is standing on to break off and fall down. The lieutenant breaks off from their fight to save her, but Licht whizzes past with super speed and catches her. She gets offended over his comment on her weight and how she should get on a diet, causing the number on his hand to go from minus 1000 to minus 1001. He throws her over to the lieutenant's arms and escapes down below, forcing Jail to quit the chase for some time. He brings them both back up and recalls Lick's words about Lin. He looks at the kid's park flyer he ripped apart and uses his iron powers to build a swing set, slides, and everything else anyone would want in a park. Since the iron he creates doesn't last long after he leaves, he gives her three days to build the foundation of the park out of his iron structures, after which she will accompany him to hunt down Licht. She enthusiastically gets working, while he sits down on his iron chair and thinks. He recalls the speed Licht used to save Lin from falling, and how it was much faster than his own speed. It means that he has yet to show them his true strength. Licht wanders around the wilderness for days with a new crow mask on. His disguise is of no use because, soon enough, Heine tracks him down. Lick tries to deny it's him and get away, but Hina yanks the mask off. Once the jig is up, Lick joins Hina and Nana at the wagon. He begs for some food but Nana turns him away, saying that he no longer works for her and he must pay for the meal. Since he doesn't have any money, she tells him to help Hina collect firewood for a well-earned meal. Really, she's just being a wing woman by trying to set them up. While collecting firewood, Hina points out how they never fulfilled their promise of eating together after he saved her. She takes out a box of sandwiches she made to make up for it. They sit down on the lush grass to savor the fresh sandwiches when suddenly they hear something burrowing toward them. A giant bird-like flying machine rushes past them with a girl on it who's pedaling it. She tries to make it fly over a canyon but the wings falter and she horrifyingly starts free falling toward the bottom. Lick gets on his feet and bolts toward her, catching her mid-air and bringing her back to safety. She thanks him and introduces herself as Pelmo. She is fascinated by Licht's ability to fly, even though he explains he only jumps in style. Believing he is the key to her dreams, she brings them to her research shed where she's been making airplane prototypes to make humanity's first flying machines. Licht points out that flying is illegal in the country, with a surefire death penalty to any guilty parties. Pelmo is aware of this, but still persists with her goal because it is her ultimate desire to fly and witness the wonders of the skies. She doesn't know why it's banned, but she doesn't care about risking her life for obtaining the power of flight. Feeling the power in her words, Licht picks up a pencil and sketches over her blueprint. After seeing his correction, she has a good feeling of the design and kicks them out of the shed to wait until she's done. While waiting, they talk about dreams and how Heine has completed her dream after finding the ace. She asks him what he's traveling so much for, but he doesn't want to give away his secret yet. Soon enough, Pelmo comes back to show them her final prototype. When she unveils her proud work, Licht senses military guards approaching. Pelmo is ready to accept her punishment and, in fact, expected it by now. However, before they arrive close enough to see the plane, Licht apologizes to her and destroys the machine in front of her eyes. The guards arrive to investigate the allegations of her researching how to fly, but she looks at them straight-faced and claims she's merely fixing a broken windmill. Once the guards have gone, Licht apologizes to her again and says that his only other option to save her would be to kill them all. He and Hina hype her up to try all over again, but Pelmo says she's run out of time. She moves her sleeve to show her count decreased from 1 to 0 and reveals that her count depends on the number of dreams she has realized. Since she has failed with this last dream, she has run out of time. A portal to the abyss opens up around her, and the same black hands that drew Heine's mother into the abyss five years ago also start taking Pelmo inside. Heine tries to run in to save her, but one of the hands slaps her away and Licht has to save her by striking the hand with his sword. When he makes contact with the hand, traumatic memories come flooding in and it looks like he gets electrocuted. Once he regains his senses, Pelmo is already almost completely inside the portal. Heine she screams in fear, but Pelmo looks at them with a calm smile and says that the abyss is an unknown place and that she believes she won't die but will have a whole new world to explore. Once she's gone for good, Hina breaks down crying and Lick collapses to his knees and is completely out of breath. She checks on him and sees the number 001 in one of his eyes, but he quickly covers it and tells her not to look. Since that incident, they return to Nana and continue traveling to different towns. While exploring a new bustling town, Lick runs into Lin who thanks him for saving her life, but places handcuffs on him once she gets close. She and Hina start talking about how they know Licht, causing the other to feel jealous. Licht tries to run away from his inevitable doom, but Nana stops him in his tracks and decides to end the conflict with a cook-off. 
with the excited locals in the audience and Lick tied up to a chair. Nana challenges them to cook a dish that cheers Lick up best. The two rivals take polar opposite approaches to the challenge, with Lin choosing fresh vegetables from the farmer's market to make a nice and fragrant light cream stew, and Hina hunting a whole bear and boar to butcher and make into a stew. Although it seems to be a surefire victory for Lin, Hina's scary bowl of stew is somehow the tastiest and richest thing Licht has ever tasted. Baffled, Pell also has a taste and agrees that it is delicious. Licht is forced to pick a winner even though he doesn't want to. However, before he has to answer, the contest is interrupted by Lieutenant Jail, who comes to inspect the sudden crowd. He yells at Lin for directly disrupting her mission of arresting Licht, but he claims she did her job by finding and tying him up to the chair. Jail points out that he would never surrender so easily, to which he agrees and gets out of the binds. The two get into a brawl again, which ravages the entire town. Jail wants to take down Licht when he's using his true power. Licht decides to oblige, but just when Jail is about to land a punch on him, Nana interferes and tells them to clean up the mess they've made. Later that evening, Nana insists they all party and drink with the locals. Jail, Lin, and Pell are made to drink enough to go out cold in the town square. By the time they wake up, Nana, Hina, and Licht have already flooded the town with their wagon. While the lieutenant's party tries to go looking for them, they come across an injured soldier who informs them of the annihilation of a nearby town named Linden. When they look in the town's direction, all they see is thick black smoke. They rush over to help the civilians but find no survivors. Pell makes the other two follow him to the town's famous lake to see that all the water has disappeared and been replaced by a thick purple fog. They shudder when they realize it's an opening to the abyss. A lone survivor who is part of the military limps up to them and cries out that a flying demon with many wings came from the abyss and massacred everyone in Linden. The soldier's swords and bows had no effect on the monster as it went on its rampage. Lieutenant Jail believes it's more likely that Ballot Holder with fire abilities must have attacked instead of a demon, but the soldier insists whatever it was, it was no human, especially because it could fly. This worries Jail because the study of flight is completely banned in the country and no human, including ballot holders, is known to be able to fly. They take the wounded soldier to a nearby town in hopes of medical assistance and run into none other than Licht and his party. What a small world. Lieutenant skips the small talk and threatens violence on Licht, convinced he knows something about the so-called demon from the abyss. Neither of them budges until Nana yells at them for disrupting her business yet again. Jail sits back down and plops a giant sack of money on the table, asking for all the booze she has. With enough bottles to intoxicate an entire village, Jail begins his new interrogation technique. Licked and him down an entire bottle before he asks his first question, who exactly is Licked? Of course he doesn't give a useful answer, so they down another bottle. The interrogation eventually degrades into a drinking competition as Jail tries to flood Licked with questions while Licked floods him with pints. Nana joins them as well, leaving Hina and Lin alone. Lin thinks back to how Licked's first instinct when Jail came to threaten him was to protect Hina even though she was also there. This spirals into insecurity and jealousy, and she feels bad that Lit doesn't like her the same way he seems to like Hina. She ends up blurting out that she won't lose to her so easily. While they fight for a man's heart, Lit and Jail are still fighting over who can drink more. They finally go out cold at the same time but can't stay down for long because a huge rumble shakes the town. They get up to find a huge hole in the middle of the city, just like the one they found in Linden. The injured soldier comes running to yell out that the demon will come to kill everyone in this town too. True to his status, Lieutenant Jail immediately assumes control and commands the military personnel to evacuate the civilians while all those with a shield or bow surround the hole. Lick gets close to the hole and hears an ominous low rumbling noise. Recognizing it, he tells Jail he should order every single person to evacuate because there is no chance of survival. Jail grabs him and demands to know what is coming and Lick just mumbles that he thought all of these things were destroyed back in the Waste Wars. All at once, the dark purple fog in the hole rises like a swirling tower and dissipates to reveal a modern-day attack helicopter with loaded guns and missiles. The helicopter starts assaulting the town with bullets and missiles indiscriminately. It takes a sharp turn to face the lieutenant and fires a missile right at him, but he is able to protect himself and all those around him by absorbing the blow with a strong iron wall. Lick starts ordering Jail around, telling him to immediately have the civilians evacuated, avoiding facing the helicopter from the front at all costs, and to create thick iron walls whenever it fires at them. Jail tells him to shut up because he has no authority, but Lick says he's the only one who knows what they're dealing with and flashes three stars under his cloak. That's when everybody realizes he has the colonel rank. 
Licht starts fighting back against the helicopter as it showers bullets around the town. However, Jail remains frozen in place, baffled over how a wanted man is a colonel in the army. The only way it makes sense is if he truly is a legendary ace. Hina tried to save a dumb, crying kid from a missile but is unable to make him move. They're only saved because Licht appears in time to slash the missile apart with his sword. After that, he leaps toward the helicopter, with everyone hoping for his success. However, those dreadful black arms start rising from the ground and seem to reach for him. One of the hands pushes him back into the roof of a building. Lin explains that the military calls these black hands all thing, and they control everything that happens in the country. Surprisingly, the hands start chasing the helicopter away, but it flies out of reach and continues its assault on the town. Lick tries another go at retaliation, but all thing pushes him away. Pick a side hands? He tries to slash one of the hands down, but he gets electrocuted, and the number 001 appears in his eye like last time. Heine urges Jail to help him, but the lieutenant looks at the scene solemnly and says it is against the law for military personnel to attack Althing and is punishable by death. Heine tries to go after Licht, who is still fighting the hands despite being electrocuted again and again, but Nana stops her because she will only get in his way. Jail takes off his glasses and asks Lin to find them for him. She's very puzzled because they're right there in his hands, but he cuts her off and says he has no choice but to fight whatever is in front of him, even if he can't see anything. Then he starts hurling iron pillar after pillar, destroying some of the hands but not yet reaching the helicopter. Lin begs him to stop breaking the law, but he persists, claiming he can't see anything and doesn't know how he's breaking the law. Finally catching on to what he's doing, Lin and all the other soldiers pretend to have a major case of mass blindness and start attacking all thing together. With all the hands occupied with stopping their projectiles, Lick jumps up to the helicopter to kill whoever is in the helicopter. But when he looks into the window, he gets shocked and hesitates with his attack. Jail follows him to ask what's wrong, but suddenly an avalanche of bullets shoots down the helicopter, sending it back to the hole it came from. They both look up to see a black-haired girl with multiple glowing wings. She comes down to greet Licht with a gun to his head. Lieutenant Jail asks her who she is, and she replies by shooting him in the chest. Jail falls to the ground, unconscious and bleeding out. Lick goes to check on him. She introduces herself as Sanahora Mizuka, the ace of pursuit. The maniac goes on a killing spree by opening fire on the civilians. Lick goes to her to make her stop, and she hugs him and says she missed him. She says she's honoring his last command to kill people and launches another merciless attack. Lick tries to stop her, but she shoots at him as well. Despite dodging her bullets, they change course and follow him until they hit. She reminds him of her power, Pursuit, which gives her the ability to never miss her targets. He gets shot down to the ground when Hina tries to run toward him, but she and the others are tackled to the ground by armed black uniformed men. Sonahor refers to Lit by his real name, Rihito, and expresses her desire for him to return to his original homicidal self while he was the ace by killing her. She tries to motivate him to do so by threatening to kill an innocent child if he doesn't kill her. Seeing the child cry for his mother makes Lit snap, and he slaughters all her men in a flash. His entire demeanor changes, and in a cool, composed voice and a new eerie mask, he finally reveals to Hina the answer to her and Jail's questions. He is the plunderer, and he wants to take everything from this nation. In accordance with the rules when two aces fight, Lit and Sonahora get into a star stake, which will always end in death. Sonahora uses her advantage in long range by relentlessly shooting him with bullets, but Lick dodges them all with his super speed. However, one of the bullets eventually hits him squarely in the chest, causing him to fall to the ground. Hina gets super worried again because she thinks Lick is no match for Sonahora's 32,000 count. However, Lin and Pella point out how he always evenly matched Jail when he fought with him, despite having a much lower count of 5,700. This must mean that he has always been hiding his true powers. Sure enough, Licht slowly gets back on his feet and lets out a deafening roar. The number on his sword starts to rapidly increase until it reaches a baffling 57,000. Sensing his true strength, Sonohara gets excited over her impending death. He flies around in an invisible blur around her as her bullets continue to chase him. Completely overwhelmed by his speed, she can no longer catch up to him and gets thrown around by him like a ragdoll. Nana warns them all to get away from Licht, because he once told her that when aces draw upon their true powers, their personalities completely change, and they are overridden with the need to kill friends or foes alike until fatigued. He roars again and gets surrounded by a purple aura, after which he chases Sonohara down and strikes her with his sword hard enough that she hits the ground. 
Her count goes down from 32,000 to 16,000, causing her to return to her original personality. Back in her senses, she is confused about where she is and gets horrified by the corpses around her. Nana recalls Lick telling her about a girl among the aces who was the kindest of them all and didn't have the heart to kill people. She suspects Sonohara was drugged to force out her powers and bait Licked into returning to his bloodthirsty ways. When Lin and Pella try to call out to him, they ask if they are his enemies because he kills his enemies. Hannah makes the very smart decision to hug him and cry for him to return to his normal self, but he thinks of her as an enemy too and moves to attack her. But Sonohara grazes his hair with a bullet to draw his attention and reminds him that she is his enemy. She tells them to run away while they have the chance. He walks toward her and picks her up by the collar. She tries to make him remember her as his old comrade in the Waste Wars, but he simply throws her against a wall. She accepts her guaranteed death and has a brief flashback of them attending high school in modern day Japan. Licht swings his sword toward her, but Lieutenant Jail makes a miraculous appearance and blocks the blow. He withstands many flashing strikes from him despite the bullet wound in his chest, but Sanohara refuses to let him fight while wounded and apologizes for shooting him before. Jail wipes her tear and blocks lit strike with a small iron object that represents all his convictions. Despite having the urge to kill his enemies, Jail detects no conviction from this version of Licht. Lick begins to cry and confess that he kills all his enemies so that his friends won't have to become murderers instead. Hearing his motives, Jail decides to honor their duel by fighting with his full powers and slips on another glove with a count of 45,000. With the new glove, he creates an iron monster that ultimately squashes Lick and brings him back to his normal self. Jail kicks his mask off to reveal Lick's face, and he apologizes to all of them for the hurt he caused. Now that everything's cooled down, Jail faints due to all his injuries. In a cathedral, God knows where a man narrates the tortoise and the hare fairy tale with his own spin to a group of kids. Basically, the hare bullied the tortoise for being too slow, so the tortoise challenged the hare to a race to the top of a mountain. Of course, the hare was too fast and set for a landslide victory. However, a wizard approached the turtle and offered his blood, saying that it would give the tortoise the ability to run faster than any hare. After drinking his blood, the tortoise ran faster than a blink, caught up to the hare, and killed him. At the end of the story, the spy soldier from before enters and reports that there was an unexpected interference in their plan, and Sonohara returned to her senses. However, this doesn't phase the man who claims to be General Schmerman, the wizard to Lick's tortoise. In the following days, Lick recovers from his injuries in a cottage with his friends, while his star stake with Sonohara remains unfinished since it can only end with one of them dying. First Lieutenant Jail is on his way to the royal capital, New Welt, to meet with the supreme commander who has summoned him. The others speculate why he was summoned there, since it's too early for his regular report. They're worried he was called in because he fought the All Thing, but Pella sets the record straight. He assures them there were no witnesses who would rat them out, and if any of the junior soldiers did, the lieutenant could simply use his power and deny the charges. Most importantly, the Supreme Commander is Jail's adoptive father, Alexander Grigorovich. When Jail arrives at the capital, he is saluted by the surviving soldier from Linden, who thanks him for saving his life. After talking to him, he makes his way to the Supreme Commander's office. The commander looks super badass, smoking a cigar at his desk, but as soon as Jail enters the room, he turns into a doting father who's glad to see his son. Jail gives a cold shoulder to his affection and insists on keeping the meeting professional since he was officially summoned. Assuming his dad doesn't have anything of value to discuss, he throws him a few questions. For starters, he asks who the black uniformed men were who claimed to be part of the military, but were attacking civilians with unfamiliar weapons. Although this is a secret only the highest ranking officials are privy to, the Supreme Commander tells Jail all he knows. The black uniformed men come from a group that is directly under the control of the country's royal family, called the Special Service Unit, or SSU. He warns Jail to steer clear of them because they're often hidden in plain sight, and every single one of them is a ballot carrier. He correctly assumes Jail's next question is about Licht and the Aces. He says the Aces are specially built soldiers made after a series of surgeries that boosted their connection between their ballots and abilities. These Aces were made to fight in the Waste Wars 300 years ago as a single platoon that wiped out enemies like never seen before, and the leader of that invincible platoon was Lick Blatch. One day, they mysteriously stopped aging and have remained living like ghosts even after the war was long over. Before Jail can react to this information, the commander points out that he seems to get very excited when bringing Licht up and questions if he's hiding Licht from the military. Jail, starting to look nervous, sternly says he isn't, 
but the count on his glove drops by one, proving he is lying. He says he will learn the truth of this entire situation on his own and dismisses himself. Finally, the commander brings up the subject of why he summoned the lieutenant here. He knows that Lieutenant Jail attacked the Althing. Later at the cottage, Lieutenant Jail silently enters through the door and walks up to Licht's bed, ignoring the other's questions. Licht understands what is coming and agrees to turn himself in. He asks Jail if he's been blackmailed into arresting him to save the others who fought the Althing, which Jail denies, dropping his count further down to 12,496. Sonhara, Lin, and the others try to protest, but Jail traps them with restraints. Right before arresting Licht, Nana slaps Jail and scolds him for not having the conviction to stand up against his orders and protect his comrades without having to turn on one of his friends. Her words make Jail snap out of his sad state, and he frees them. Nana thanks Jail for being the only one in 300 years to fight Licht with all he's got and thanks the others for believing in him when no one else has. As a token of gratitude, she reveals that she is one of the aces and transports them 300 years back to witness what happened in the Waste Wars, and if possible, change how things transpired because she couldn't. Their first stop after time traveling is in front of an ordinary high school in modern day Japan. They see Sonohara in a high school uniform, walk towards the gate and greet a black haired dude by calling him Riido Senpei. That name rings a bell. The group takes a look around the building and are fascinated by the advanced technology even though this is supposed to be 300 years in the past. It's hard to tell if Rahido is the same person as Licht, since he looks so different, but Hina feels fairly confident in her hunch that he is. They enter the school gymnasium, where a giant, lanky, and creepy-looking dude named Takatora bumps into Hina and gets triggered over it. Lin calls him out for staring like a weirdo, but he slaps her. Jail immediately gets in between them, but realizes he doesn't have his ballot gloves. While distracted, the weirdo punches him, Sonohara tremblingly whispers for him to stop, but he doesn't take this well. Another guy named Tokakeis also steps in, but somehow jail, and he end up in an argument which is thankfully interrupted by the beginning of a ceremony. Captain Allen walks up to the stage and welcomes the students to Special Military School 13, where they're no longer civilians but are newly born soldiers. Second Lieutenant Ferenda delivers a presentation detailing how most of the world's countries have completely crumbled as a result of a terrible world war and Japan is the only one remaining standing. There are hundreds of global level calamities going on at the same time, and basically nothing is okay. The captain cuts her speech short and hands the mic over to the headmaster and commander in chief, Major Schmerman. Everybody salutes at attention as he reads his twisted version of Tortoise and the Hare. Soon enough, some of the students start laughing and the ridiculousness of it all. Captain Allen shoots them all in the head for disobeying their orders as soldiers. Naturally, all the students panic and storm towards the exit, but the captain shoots a bullet in the air and threatens to kill anyone who dares run away without any orders. Finally, he points the gun at Hina, saying anyone who sheds tears will also be eliminated. Surprisingly, Tokake stands up for her with a katana and also lands in hot water for turning against a superior officer. When it looks like it's game over for all, Rihito threatens to kill Major Schmerman with a stick to his throat. Schmerman finds this courage admirable and teaches him how to kill by twisting his neck and dares him to do it and win the war but if he fails, Hina dies. Riido refuses to kill him and asks him to let him die instead of Hina. This act confirms in their minds that Riido is indeed licked. Schmerman gets ready to kill him, but Ferenda interrupts the intense moment and tells everybody to calm down. The captain sighs and shoots a bullet behind Hina. The students he shot in the head are surprised to be alive and get up, realizing that they were hit by paintballs. This was all some elaborate lesson to teach them how to behave on the battlefield. Okay then. After the ceremony, Major Schmerman and Captain Allen discuss the event. The captain believes that Tokake shows real potential with the katana, but Schmerman is most intrigued by Rihito because he was the first one to detect something wrong and move directly to threaten the commander. He also finds it interesting that the boy voluntarily signed up to join a military school without wanting to kill. For all these qualities, the headmaster has his eye on him as a potential candidate. Later, Pelly shows the others a discovery he made on the computer after learning how it works. He came across footage of something falling from the sky, also coincidentally named Althing. He tries to get more information from the website he pulled the video from, but access is denied. Captain Allen, who was eavesdropping on them, claims that Althing is a god that was made from extremely advanced technology leagues ahead of their own and was sent from the skies at the peak of the war. The device decides its actions on its own and forces them on everyone through unknown powers. Humanity believed the entity came from heaven and allowed it to make decisions on the banning of nuclear weapons and warfare in hopes of attaining world peace. 
Although it seemed to achieve exactly that in the beginning, things went terribly wrong after some point. Captain Allen elaborates no more and tells them to go to class. With more questions than answers, Hina and the gang have a lot to figure out about not only Licht, but the entire world's past to make things right.